Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello, thank you for that warm welcome as the 2023 series of Brain of Britain gets underway. And this is series number 70 of the programme. 48 quiz-minded individuals await their Brain of Britain adventure with knockout heats and semi-finals to navigate en route to the final in December. And who knows, our eventual champion may be among the quartet who join me here at the Radio Theatre for this opening contest. We'll lose no time in meeting them. Hello, I'm Jason Butler, a warehouse operative from Sittingbourne in Kent. Hello, I'm Jude Child. I'm an electrical wholesaler from Southsea. Hello, I'm Susanna Croft. I'm a civil servant from Essex. Hello, I'm Akin Yilmaz. I'm a finance director from Enfield. Thank you all. Plenty has happened to the world since we were last on air, but you'll be relieved to know the rules of Brain and Britain remain constant and impervious to outrageous fortune. We go around in alphabetical order of surname. Each question is worth a point, and I keep asking them until you get one wrong or can't answer, in which case I'll open it up to the others for a bonus, and then move on. Once you've scored five in a row, that will also be the end of your turn, and we'll give you a bonus point for that achievement as well. You get up to ten seconds to think about your answer, but the moment you hear this, your time has run out, and I can't accept answers given after the bell. So, let's get started, and good luck, everyone. Would you begin the first round of 2023, please, Jason Butler? Which snooker player is sometimes known by the nicknames The Rocket and The Essex Exocet? Ronnie O'Sullivan. That's him. In which Roald Dahl story is Bruce Bogtrotter forced by his teacher to consume a giant chocolate cake in front of the whole school after being accused of stealing food? Matilda. It is Matilda. It's the tyrannical Miss Trunchbull who hands out this punishment. The opening words of Handel's anthem, Zadok the Priest, used at the coronation of King Charles III and at that of each of his predecessors, as far back as George II, mention Zadok the Priest and someone, the prophet. Who is the someone? Jesus? No. Uh, Susanna Croft? Nathan. Nathan the prophet is right. It's very loud and high, so it's quite hard to de decipher, I must say. Um, Jude Child's turn. What term originally describing an anti-industrial movement of the 19th century is now often applied to any group of people sceptical about new technology? Luddite. Luddites, yes. The original Luddites were textile workers who formed a secret society to wreck the machines they saw as putting their jobs at risk. When the poet John Betjeman went up to Magdalen College, Oxford, he arrived with his companion Archibald Orms Bigore. Who was Archibald Orms Bigore? A teddy bear? He was his teddy bear, yes. Uh, the terms stereolithography additive manufacturing and rapid prototyping are all lesser used names for what technological process? Printing. Can you uh, uh, expand that a little? Jason Butler? 3D printing. It's 3D printing, that's the necessary thing. The most common form of three-dimensional printing is fused deposition modeling, in which a continuous plastic filament builds an object layer by layer. We go on to Susanna Croft. The Kauto is the longest river in which island country, the largest island in the archipelago of which it's a part. Cuba. Cuba, yes, it flows for some 230 miles or 370 kilometers from its source to the Gulf of Guacanabo. What is the title of the debut novel by Sarah Waters, set in the 1890s and telling the coming-of-age story of a young woman named Nan, which was first published in 1998 by Virago Press? Tipping the Velvet. That's the one. A three-part BBC television adaptation was shown in 2002. What double letter is often seen at the bottom of business correspondence, which has been signed by one person on behalf of another? PP. Yep, stands for the Latin phrase per procurationem. 
In 2021, Megan Swan became the first woman and the youngest person to become the president of which organization, whose motto is in docilis privata loqui. I don't know, pass. Okay, anybody gonna have a guess at that? Okay, it's the Magic Circle founded at Pinoli's Restaurant on Wardour Street in 1905, and not admitting women till 1991. The circle's motto means not apt to disclose secrets. Aki Nilmaz, we come to you. In May 2023, after a penalty shootout in the playoff final, which football club gained promotion to the English Premier League for the first time in its history? Luton Town. It was. Hatters had been in the old first division before, of course. They'd also spent several years in non-league football. The branch of economics concerned with the use of statistical methods to obtain empirical results for economic relations is known as what? Out of time, I'm afraid. Does anybody want to hazard a guess at that? No? I think you'll know the term, although you may have forgotten. Econometrics. Econometrics is the answer, and that is the end of the first round of the contest. Everybody has scored, which is lovely. Aki Nielmas has one, Jude Child two, Jason Butler three, and neatly enough, Susanna Croft four. <laughs> Now, it's time for the first question with music, and it's for you, Jason Butler. Here's the late Alan Hawkshaw's arrangement of the promenade from Mussorgsky's classical work, Pictures at an Exhibition. In the late 1980s and early 90s, it was used as the theme tune for which television sitcom, written by Lawrence Marks and Maurice Graham? Statesman. It was, which starred Rick Mayle as the MP Alan Bastard, much imitated by <laughs> history. Who was the British Prime Minister when John F. Kennedy was assassinated? Harold Wilson? It wasn't, no. Uh, Akin Yilmaz? Harold Macmillan. It wasn't Macmillan either. Jude Child? Um. Alec Douglas Hume? That's right, yes. And it is a tricky one because he, he'd been in office for only four weeks at the time. But you're right, and it's your question. The metropolitan city of Kathmandu is the capital of which landlocked country in South Asia? Nepal. Yes. At the Super Bowl in February 2023, which team became NFL champions for the second time in four years after fighting back to claim a 38-35 win over the Philadelphia Eagles? Denver Broncos? No. Uh, can you name the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs is the right answer, yes. Susanna Croft, your turn. In 1513, which Florentine diplomat wrote his political treatise Il Principe, or The Prince? Niccolo Machiavelli. Yes, short treatise on how to acquire power, create a state, and hold on to it. Jane, June, Julia, Joanna, and Jennifer were the first names of the five main stars of which BBC sitcom? No. Jason Butler? Absolutely fabulous. It was. Jane Horrocks played Bubble, June Whitfield Mother, Julia Sawala Safi, Joanna Lumley Patsy Stone, and Jennifer Saunders Eddie Monsoon. And we come to Aki Nilmas. Lake Nakuru National Park, home to some 400 bird species, notably pink flamingos, is located in the Great Rift Valley within which East African country? Tanzania? No. Uh, Jason Butler? Kenya. Republic of Kenya is the right answer. And we reach the end of another round. 
The scores are these, Akin Yilmaz, two, Jude Child, four, Susanna Croft, five, and Jason Butler, six. All pretty close, nobody's getting away. Jason Butler, back to you. On the 6th of February 1971, astronaut Alan Shepard hit a golf ball on the moon as part of which crewed space mission? Apollo 14. That's the one, the third Apollo mission to land people on the moon. I never remember those numbers, but you did. In Greek mythology, the witch Circe turns Odysseus's men into what animals? Sheep. No. Uh, Susanna Croft? Pigs. Pigs. Swine, they are. Yes. Jude Child, it's your turn again, and we're about to hear a, a clip from the children's TV series Blue Peter, which celebrates its 65th anniversary in 2023. Can you identify the form of transport John Noakes is trying out in this moment from an edition of 1969? There is quite a skill in getting on. First, you've got to put your left foot on there, on a little peg at the back here, and then you scoot along. And when you've got enough speed, then you whip your leg up onto the pedal. So I'll start me scoot. Yes. Well, when you get up here, you're supposed to whip your other leg up. But I can't. You've got to get on the saddle as well. Uh, and so practice will win out in the... <laughs> penny farthing. A penny farthing, yes. <laughs> yes. It's more than a bicycle. Who was the queen consort of Edward II who played a key role in the deposition of the king in 1327? Isabel of Spain. No. Any more goes. Jason Butler. Eleanor of Aquitaine? No. No more tries, no. I'm very sorry not to be able to give you this. Isabella of France, sometimes called Louvre de France or the She-Wolf of France. So it's very definitely French. She's said to have plotted with Roger Mortimer to have Edward dispensed with in a notoriously undignified way at Berkeley Castle. Susanna Croft, in the periodic table, the vertical column or group that consists of fluorine, bromine, chlorine, iodine, and astatine is given what name? Uh, um, earth metals? No. Uh, Jason Butler? Halogens. Halogens, yes. Now, Akin Yilmaz's turn. Which accomplished film director's first Academy Award-nominated work was the 1980 film the Elephant Man. No, out of time. Jason Butler? David Lynch. It was David Lynch. Nominated he was, but he was pipped that year by Robert Redford, who directed Ordinary People. These are the scores now. Aki Newman's two. Jude Child, five, Susanna Croft, six, Jason Butler, nine. <laughs> All right, let's take a brief break from the rivalry then at roughly the halfway point in the contest. This is where we give our competitors a chance to pool their knowledge to tackle a pair of questions from a listener hoping to beat the brains. We've had some splendid suggestions coming in since we were last on air, and we're grateful to everyone who suggested question ideas for this part of the program. We can only feature a small proportion of them, of course, but please do keep them coming in. If we select your ideas and our brains can't get the right answers, you'll win a book voucher prize. I should say this bit is just for fun. It doesn't make any difference to the scores our competitors have notched up so far. To kick off the uh, 2023 series, we've chosen questions sent to us by listener Elaine Tienan. If you're ready for her first question, here it is. Can you tell me which US president was born on the same day as Charles Darwin? Any clues? Who's Charles Darwin born? I mean, I'll be, in, I'll, be more in, I'll be inclined to go with the obvious Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, that's what I thought. I can't remember when Darwin was yeah. born, so fill your boots. I'll go for that. Abraham Lincoln? Correct. On the 12th of February, 1809. 
<laughs> they were born many thousands of miles apart, but on the same day, the 12th of February, 1809. Well, you, you weren't detained much by that. Here's the second part of Elaine's question. This does crop up sometimes in quizzing circles, but you might not have heard it before. Let's see. Two very notable British writers died on the same day as the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and for that reason their deaths received rather less coverage than they might have warranted. Can you name them both? I think one's Aldous Huxley. Mm -hmm. He's going to like it to be Orwell or something like that. Did I Orwell, think it might be C.S. Lewis. I think they might be the two. Okay. Oh, Russell is right. I'm pretty sure I have seen this somewhere I'm happy before. To go with Huxley and Lewis. Yep. C.S. Lewis and Aldous Huxley. Correct again. Well, yes, you are. Right. <laughs> yes, Aldous Huxley, author of Brave New World, and C.S. Lewis, best known for the Narnia Chronicles, but also with a very prolific and varied oeuvre. So, thank you, Elaine, but our brains have proved equal, very much equal to your challenge in our first contest of the series, so we can't supply you with a prize today, I'm sorry to say. But we very much enjoyed your questions, and by time-honoured Brain of Britain convention, we show you our gratitude with this exceptionally brave new round of applause. You can get your question ideas to us by email, that's much the best way, to brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk. Please remember to include the answers, and do make sure you supply two good, meaty questions. It's quite common for people to send us one lovely one, but forget that we need two, which can be a bit frustrating. You can send us more than two, if you like, of course, and leave it up to us, which we pick. If email really isn't your thing, you can always send your questions to us on paper. If you prefer, just address them to Brain of Britain, BBC Dock House, Media City UK, Salford, M50 2LH. Let's resume the contest proper, and the next round starts with you again, Jason. The address of which major building is 20 West 34th Street, New York, New York, 10001? Empire State Building? You're right, yes. A red giant is a dying star that has exhausted what primary source of fuel at its core? Hydrogen. Yes. A shallow body of water, a store of weapons, an open-air swimming pool, and an impoverished urban district can each be described using the name of a location in which city? Or locations plural, I should really say. No, I don't know. Okay. Akin Yilmazda? Lido. Ah, but we need which city, you see? Which city is this involving? Susanna Croft? Venice? Yes, yes. The words lagoon, arsenal, Lido, and ghetto all entered the English language via their namesake locations in Venice. Well done. Jude Child's turn. In horticulture and botany, what's the meaning of the word deciduous? It loses leaves. Yes, shedding or losing its leaves, yes. The pyramid of Cuculcan el Castillo forms part of which complex of Mayan ruins in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico? Machu Picchu? No. Uh, Jason Butler? Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. The main city was constructed between 350 and 900 AD. Susanna Croft, it's your turn for a sound clip, and you get to hear an extract from I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the panel game which turned 50 in 2022. Everybody's doing it. Here in the popular segment called One Song to the Tune of Another, the comedian Harry Hill sings the words of Postman Pat to which film musical number? Postman Pat and his black and white cat Oh, 
climb every mountain? Yes, from the sound of music. After that extract, the host, Jack D, remarked, it's not often you get to witness someone entering puberty live. <laughs> <laughs> According to Norse mythology, the goddess Freya, often associated with love, beauty, fertility, and magic, has a chariot pulled by what animals? Reindeer? No. A uh, Jude child? Wolves? No. A Jason Butler? Dogs? No. Let's go for bulls. No. They're cats. Two, oh. two very large cats. <laughs> Akin Dilmaz, the London-born singer and composer Monty Norman, who died in 2022, is most famous for creating which movie theme? A James Bond film. Yes, used from the very first Bond film, Dr. No, in 1962 onwards. A Spanish series whose title translates as The Girl from Yesterday, and a Russian series whose title translates as The Dark Side of the Moon, were both international remakes of which BBC series of the 2000s? No, and so far no offers, no? I'll have to tell you then, it was Life on Mars. Oh. You remember that, yes. The first international remake was a version for ABC set in New York and starring Harvey Keitel as Gene Hunt, which lasted for only one season. That brings us to the end of a round. Here are the scores. Aki Nilmaz, three. Jude Child, six. Susanna Croft, eight. Jason Butler, 12. And I have to warn you folks that this will have to be the last round of the contest as we return to Jason Butler. What type of wheat is used in the manufacture of pasta and semolina? Sorghum? No. Uh, Jude Child? Durham. Durham, Durham, yes. Uh, yes. And it's your question, Jude. According to Greek mythology, the first human woman unleashed all the evils of the world by opening what? Pandora's box. Yes, the first woman being Pandora, of course. The city of Pretoria in South Africa is popularly known as the Jacaranda city. What is a jacaranda? It's a tree. Yes, or a shrub, yes, or a flower, really, but a tree will do fine. Inspired by its nickname, the Athens of the South, which American city is home to the world's only detailed, full-sized replica of the Parthenon? Memphis. No. Jason Butler? New Orleans. No. Aki Newmouth? Atlanta. No. No, no more goes. Jude was not far away. It, it was Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee was right. Like many other buildings in the city, the replica Parthenon was designed by William Crawford Smith. Susanna Croft's question. According to Christian tradition, 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus was transported body and soul to heaven. What ecumenical feast celebrates this event? The Ascension. The Ascension, yes. Which stage musical, inspired by a popular TV series, features two characters with the names Pam Lee and Phil Hollinghurst and numbers with the titles Somewhere in the Doe and The Handshake Song? Out of time. Popular TV series, worth a guess for someone? There's a point here. Yes, Jude Child? Coronation Street. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get a lot more popular than that. Any more? Any more guesses? No, it's Bake Off the Musical. <laughs> yes, I know. I never saw it. The characters are based on judges Prue Leith and Paul Hollywood. The show transferred to the West End in 2023. <coughs> Aki Nilmaz in... May 2023, the music world mourned the loss of the so-called queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner. Here, she's performing an Al Green song which served as her comeback single in 1983, a collaboration with a Sheffield band who provided production and backing vocals. After we've heard Let's Stay Together, I'd like you to name that band.
2017. Yes, group member Martin Ware, along with Greg Walsh, produced the recording. They also operated under the name the British Electric Foundation. The world's only float-through branch of McDonald's is situated on a canal in which very appropriate European city? Venice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have everything in Venice, no. Any more? You're Jude Child. Amsterdam. No. No more guesses. It really is appropriate. It's Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> The restaurant serves vessels on one of the many canals linking the rivers Bille and Elbe. McDonald's ultimately owes its existence to the city's invention of the pan-fried minced beef patty. And we've run out of time, I'm afraid, and so the final scores in today's opening heat of Brain of Britain are these. Aki Nilmaz, four points. Susanna Croft and Jude Child, nine apiece. Jason Butler, 12. Which means we'll be meeting Jason Butler again at the semi-final stage. Very well done. Join us next time to hear four more brains competing in the second heat of 2023. Thank you for listening today, and until then, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>